First song of the week. Cold Hard Steel and Sand by Braxton Keith. Now, what do y'all know about Braxton Keith? He's a new, he's a new little boy on the scene. Not little boy. <laughs> so why did I say little boy? He's a new young gentleman on the scene. He's a country singer. He's from Texas. And he can't be more than 22, 23. Like, he is so young. And I did DM him. <laughs> I did DM him and say, when are you coming to Los Angeles, California? And he said, I don't know if people know who I am out there. And I said, well, I do shit. I didn't come on over. Literally come over. Come on, y'all. And of course, I'm about to be talking about Hosier. So strap in. Strap in and strap on, team. Because we're talking about Hosier. First Light is one of the best songs I've ever heard, maybe. Abstract Psycho, Psycho Pump? Psycho Pump is my favorite song on the album. And I'll talk about it in detail. Give me like, give me a few minutes here. These two songs have been simply on repeat. I've listened to the album all the way through probably like three, four times. I just have chills. I love those here. There's so many ways that you could take this, the earth from a distance, see how it shines. <laughs> I love him! The fuck? Now we're gonna look up Unknown's lyrics. Because he's- he is sick. He's sick. Where you were held frozen like an angel to me. Fuck you! Fuck you! That's not real! He's not real! I've seen so many interviews where people are like, you know, you were written by a woman. Like, you're the female gaze. You're whatever. And he's like, am I? I don't know. You're a sick fuck. You're a sicko. I love him so much. He needs to be locked away for a very long time. You need to be locked in prison for a very long time. You need the internet taken away from you. You are a danger to society. <laughs> That's me the hosier. When he comes on Mark Zuckerberg's internet, starts posting all this sappy bullshit, get it off. I'm not interested. Not interested. Boo! I love him. I love him so much. Let's look up to Shelby 2's lyrics. Is it to Shelby? Am I, Ir am I Irish phobic? Am I irophobic? I want to run against the world that's turning. I'd move so fast that I'd outpace the dawn. I want to be gone. I want to run so far I'd beat the morning. Before the dawn has come, I'd block the sun if you want it done. God, you want the moon, darling? I'll, I'll tie a lasso around it and I'll give it to you. I'll bring it down to you. That's literally Hosier. I, if he wasn't Irish, if if Hosier would stop with the fake Irish accent, I bet he'd talk like this. Well, darling, you know that I'd give you the moon if you asked for it. He would. He has a transatlantic accent. Hosier, if if we freed him from. <laughs> Give up the Irish bit, Hosier. We know you're a 1950s transatlantic movie star. What you're given, what you live in. Darling, it finds a way to live in you. And your heart, love, has such darkness. I feel it in the corners of the room. He's so spooky. Uh, Hosier spooky? Hosier spooky, emotional, not clickbait. Okay, we're gonna move on from Hosier because I can't talk about him for too long. I can't talk about it for too long. I'm going to get really emotional. And I already kind of did. So next week, we'll definitely dive into it more because I'll have spent more time with it. It's only been out for like a week and a half. And it took me like, honest to God, five days to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down. Because this is what I've been saying of like, Wasteland Baby means so much to me and self-titled means so much to me too that I didn't want potentially something to replace it. And I'm afraid that what if I didn't like the new album? Which is impossible, because I'll like whatever he puts out. <sighs> if you don't want to hear me talk about Call of Duty, fuck off! Because I have stuff to say! There are developments. Broski Nation, I need you at full attention. There are developments. I need you to stop what you're doing. Hands off the wheel, eyes closed. We have developments. Put some, put some headline news music over this. This just in, an Italian ghost cosplayer who also does Star Wars stuff 
and sounds like ghost made a video directed at me. This was a direct attack on my life. And we're gonna watch it. Brittany, please, please notice me. Please notice me. Now see, I'm not, I'm not trying to do all that. All right. Let's see whatever that was at the end. You lost me. Because at first, at first I was into it. I was rocking with you at first. And then, and then you had to do that voice at the end. One thing about men, don't try to be funny. Don't try to be funny. I'll do that. Leave the jokes to me. You just stand there and be hot, okay? You don't need to do anything else. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. I'll do the fun. I'll do the jokes, please. Please. Full of God, just stand there. I saw this. You know what's really terrifying? Is I didn't see this in my mentions on TikTok. This came on my fucking For You page. This came on my For You page and I saw my name and I just about fell out. I just about fell out. And now you know what we're about to do. We're about to stalk him. I love the light city bus, all right? But do you know what I love the most? Goth girls with big teeth. Okay, see so you lost me again. You lost me! Men are so stupid! Men are so stupid! Just stand there! Just stand there! Just stand there in the ghost cosplay with the fucking lightsaber. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to talk. Please stop talking. Because what you chose to say is that you have a lightsaber and you want a goth girl with big tits. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I have a gun. <laughs> Why did Jeffree Star get a custom made Beretta pistol? <laughs> Why did he do that? Why? There's not one fucking reason why Jeffree Star should have a pistol. A Louis Vuitton. Oh, I'm drooling. See, like, I understand. I understand that, especially with cosplayers on TikTok, there is this need to sort of break up the seriousness of, you know, the character or not taking yourself too seriously while making one of these videos. But I feel like there's a way to do that that's not the fucking... I want a big titty goth girl. Okay, you and everyone else, brother, get in line. But it's like, that's not, that's not the way to do it is like, I don't know, I'm, I'm mad. I'm angry, I just got angry. Uh oh, I'm mad. That's not the way to do it. Just stop, this is my advice to men everywhere. And I hope you guys will kind of spread this gospel. Stop talking. If you have something to say, maybe reel it in. Maybe think twice. What's that thing? Is this, before you speak, think. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? I'm gonna, every, every woman in a relationship should print out this image and like put it on the fucking wall. Like we're in a kindergarten classroom to remind every man. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring, necessary, and kind? If the answer is no, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. I'm gonna make this my profile picture. I'm gonna start posting like half naked thirst traps and then halfway through when I'm about to go full on nudie, it's just gonna pop up with this. I'm gonna post my naked body and right before we get down to nippies, it's gonna be this image. <laughs> It's just gonna green screen pop up silent and then it's gonna make people reflect. Why the fuck were you? What are you doing team? Hey chiller What's up my beast? What's up beast? What are you doing? Okay, yes, I talk I do have the ability to talk but this is my cat. His name is Loki and I love him. Okay. Also, I really love goth girls This is my cat. All right. <laughs> what does he say? How copy? This is Loki. How copy? He didn't have to do all that. 
Men need to be electroshocked into good behavior. Inquisitor, Inquisitor, you have so much potential. Inquisitor, listen to me. Hold my hand. You have so much potential. Don't let it be wasted. Don't let it be for naught. Do not disappoint me. Go. He's so cute. <laughs> His voice is so cute. And he's Italian. Uh, I wish Italy was real. Okay, so, right, so why did he say men and females, right? That's about to piss me off. So, uh, anyway, Inquisitor, you you have some work to do, but I give you, I'm going to rate you 6 out of 10, okay? 6 out of 10 overall. I like the basis of what you're doing, but some behavior needs to be uh, adjusted. Now, this is my favorite! Raven is my favorite Call of Duty cosplayer, dude. Okay? Raven is my favorite. We can go I need her. I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> okay. Now, this is using a Last of Us audio. So immediately, I'm tuned in. Immediately, I'm plugged in. Okay? Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And... You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has She's either scary. died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. So the lore here. <laughs> okay, so the lore. <laughs> let me let me catch you up. Okay, because you bitches don't understand that was an art piece. <laughs> you bitches don't understand that was a fucking art piece. The lore. <laughs> I just had that moment again where I was like, "What the fuck am I doing? I'm sh I'm sharing something." <laughs> deep so deep within me that i'm getting embarrassed but there's no turning back now if you're an audio listener let me explain what the caption said okay so that's obviously an audio from the last of us where joel is about to leave uh ellie at like leave ellie with uh what his brother or something like that or no no, no. Leave Ellie somewhere and Joel's gonna go look for his brother. Something like that. And Ellie was like, everyone always leaves me. Like, everyone I've ever loved just left me. And then obviously Joel's daughter got killed. Uh, got shot by uh, Fedra. And so... <laughs> ghost in this scenario. <laughs> okay, stay with me. Stay with me, guys. Alright, you're veering off. You gotta come back in. Come back into the lane. We're still, we're still here. Okay, we're still in Ghost <laughs> Duty cosplay. Okay? Um, ghost, you were, <laughs> you were ghost's, uh, girlfriend, wife, partner, or something like that, okay? And Ellie, the Ellie character, I don't know, it's probably ghost's, like, teammate, is teasing ghost about, like, oh, I've lost people too. And ghost is like, you have no fucking idea what loss is, because he lost your name, okay? He lost Y slash N, and it, it, he never recovered, okay? He's a shell of who he was. <laughs> Because he lost your name. It's fan fiction. And then and then the character, the rookie is like, ghost teammate, the rookie is like, yeah, well, duh, duh, and shoves him. And then and then Raven, oh. <laughs> she's like, acts like someone shoved her. She's a good little actress. I'll tell you something. The first time I saw Raven, I didn't, I didn't know she was a girl. And I was like, that's fucking period. And she's hot. Hold on. Let me pull up another one. He has a girlfriend. I don't see her. Turn around. <laughs> now you see her. It's something about this tickles the fiber of the mask kink for me. <laughs> you can see them smiling under the mask, but you can't see their face. Something about that makes me tingle. Something about that really freaks me out. 
Okay. When, when, uh, I realized how attracted I am to that. And then I'm like, this is not, uh, normal or good or acceptable. I would say it's so bad. It's to the point I see like a motorcyclist on the freeway. Like I'll be driving. I'll look over and there'll be just like a dude in a motorcycle helmet. I, hey, I'm not, I'm not looking at the road anymore. My, my head's like this. <laughs> I'm going 90 miles an hour with my head at a fucking 90 degree. I'm looking straight at him until, until he pull, pulls forward, pulls, <laughs> until he pulls forward. Ew! So this one says, POV, you catch a ghost staring. I'm like getting nervous. You catch a ghost staring at you while you're getting your gear on. <laughs> because, of course, in any POV in the Call of Duty cinematic universe, you are in the military. Because why would you not be? They're not frequenting civilian bars, Okay. Now, it's hard for me to get in that mindset because, uh, no, I, I don't want to do that. Sometimes, oh my God, y'all, I've read some fucked up fan fictions <laughs> in my lifetime, in my time on God's green earth. I've read some fucked up things online. Okay. And I watched this one or not watched. Raven's distracting me. I'm literally like, okay. I read this one fan fiction one time when I was deep in my narcos phase. <laughs> And for anyone who remembers that, y'all are troopers, and I'm so sorry for what it's worth. That was, but here's the thing, that was the genesis of my Pedrito era, okay? And this was like two, three years ago, and y'all bullied me for it. High school bullies! Y'all turned me into Gabby Hanna about it! These are high school bullies! I was so deep into my Pedro Pascal era and only a few of y'all understood, okay? Because The Mandalorian had just come out, like season one, I think season two was about to come out. Um, and then I realized, I was like, what else has he been in? And then I was like, oh my God, Game of Thrones, I remember him, but I I wasn't like an Oberyn Martell stan. And then I was like, Narcos looks tea. And I, I do kind of want to know more about Pablo Escobar. And so I was like, okay, I'll watch this. Narcos changed my life. Pedro playing... Javier Peña changed me as a woman, okay? I was so deep into my Javier Peña phase that I was like, I can't, I feel batshit crazy. Like, I feel like there's a screw loose somewhere. And that's kind of unrelated from me in my normal life. This was specifically a, a, a separate screw came loose watching Narcos. And so I was spam posting on Instagram about it. Every day, I would be like, Javier Peña this, Javier Peña that, Pe Pedro Pascal, whatever. People were like, who is that? And then, of course, everything came out with Last of Us and, and Mando Season 3. And he's just exploded into this, like, S-tier superstar now. And I'm so happy. But, like, I, three years ago, was like, oh, my God, he's the one. And y'all were like, who's that? Whatever. So I was deep, deep on Tumblr and AO3 trying to find these goddamn Javier Pena, like your name, <laughs> Javier Pena X reader, like stories. And I mean novels because this is a, I don't want to read a one shot, bitch. I don't want to read a fucking one shot. I don't want to read something that you took 30 minutes to type up like three paragraphs and it's like, and then happy ever after. I need the grit. I need the drama. I need the contrast. I want them to yell at each other and slap. No. And then they almost died. Oh my God. And then they're back together. And oh my God, I missed you so much. You know, that sort of shit. I need it. So I go on AO3 and I find, actually, no, no, I'm lying. My friend Caitlin sent me this. Caitlin, love you. Shout out. Um, and we became internet friends oh, through my DMs because she sent me something and I was like, I know this bitch gets it. I know this bitch gets it hard. She sent me some wrecks and I was like, holy shit. And I read this one. <laughs> I'm not joking. It is so, it is so like, who wrote this? So the main character is you, but you are uh, an operative. Okay. Like you work for the DEA and you're stationed in Colombia and whatever. They're hunting for Pablo Escobar and all this shit. Javier Peña is obviously your coworker. And you are, I think um, the character in this one, they called her ears. Because she was one of the people that like, because this is set in the 80s. This is set in the 80s. Um, she was one of the people that used to wear the headphones and like uh, decode 
um like like translate and like decode things that they would say over the radio frequencies and whatever like calls between the patron and and his uh kind of henchmen and then she would write it down and report it to javi and what's javi's fucking partner's name the hot blonde guy steve murphy steve murphy um anyway so she she was that and they fall in love she gets kidnapped bitch she gets kidnapped. And it's also like, I was reading this kind of like, this is fucked. Who is writing? Who is writing a fan fiction about like a real life historical event and like inserting yourself into it? I mean, I get it <laughs> from an artistic standpoint. But morally, does that piece of art need to exist? Does that piece of literature need to exist? Probably not. And I was like, Holy shit, halfway through reading this, I was like, what the fuck am I reading? Like, I felt bad. It was very well written, though. <laughs> and she would, like, incorporate Spanish. She was like, in the little author's note, she'd be like, I don't speak Spanish, but fuck me, I'm gonna try. And she would do, like, sh she would have her friends uh, check her Spanish <laughs> translations and, like, come up with, it was so, like, oh my god. And it was, like, 150,000 words. Like, it was so long. I don't even know if I finished it. And it was traumatic, and it was dramatic, and it was just, like, wow. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm reading <laughs> on AO3. That's the type of shit I'm into, okay? But I think that's pretty much it. Other than if you guys wanted to watch some more Raven videos with me. Horny. 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 Hot. Sexy. Horny. We need, like, a... I need one of those soundboards that like TMG or any of these podcasts have that's like a red alert. It's like an alarm. <laughs> we need like this. Every time I get horny, like like criminally horny, this needs to go off and I need to be like, the lighting needs to change, needs to go red and we need to have like, <laughs> it's LED lights. It's those TikTok LED lights. Vinny Hacker comes in. <laughs> It's Vinny Hacker Hour. Okay, I just needed to, I really wanted to touch on the guy at the beginning of the episode, the Inquisitor guy, because that video came on my For You page and I was like, not them knowing about me and I just made this video and I woke up this morning thinking no one was even gonna see it. It's at a million views. Uh, why is it in a cage? Because it growled at me. <laughs> this has 360,000 likes. I didn't, stop, this was supposed to be my thing. I just have to make a burner, I think. I have to make a burner, but I'm terrified that you bitches will find it. We need to bring back Tumblr, dude. I'm sick of this, I need my anonymity. I need my anonymity so I can talk about this shit and be as gross as I want. And people can't be like, I'm 14. <laughs> yeah, bitch, I was too. And I saw Blue Waffle. I'm a minor, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna switch gears completely, totally. And we're gonna talk about Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. <laughs> we're gonna talk about John Krasinski and Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. Now, what am I talking about? Funny you should ask. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're gonna be talking about, guys. Right here, if you could direct your attention to the screen, it's gonna be a sweaty picture of ripped John Krasinski. And I say this totally seriously. Um, I fantasize about him. I think about him a lot. He permeates my thoughts throughout the day. Dreams, nightmares, maladaptive daydreaming. I'm thinking about John Krasinski, okay? Now, is he another white man of the month? Yeah, yeah, okay? Look at him. Look at him. Whew, that's a great picture. That's a great fardor. Sometimes he looks a little dorky. I'll admit. Okay. He looks, he's given Jim. It's giving Jim. But here. God. God. Okay. If you don't know about Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, he is a CIA analyst. Okay. He's like an operative. Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan is so good. It's sort of in that universe of television. If you're into that of like, it's very fast paced. It's very like, oh, and he did that because he's working with Dink. And oh my God, I should have known that she was going to turn on him because he's dead. Weird. It's that. It's like, you're trying to think ahead of the show, but the show always takes a turn. And it's so good. And John Krasinski is so hot. He's so hot. 
Seen him pin Badgley from Easy A when he's the beaver mascot. That's me to John Krasinski. Oh, God. Anyway, this show is so good, and I just binged seasons one and two, and I'm about to start season three. Dude, it's just a great show. Like, I love a good TV show. I hope they don't fuck it up. Because if I get to season four, they fuck it. You know who I'm going to bitch to? You guys. So I'm going to punish you guys if the show (laughs) ends badly, because that's going to affect my psyche. Okay. Jack Ryan. So, so good. I also love military adjacent things because I get to look at men in military uniforms. I'm a woman of simple taste. I am a woman of simple making. Okay. If I see a man in a uniform, if I see a man in a helmet, if I see a man in a mask, it's over. Jerking it. Okay. (laughs) How many times am I going to say the word jerking? The phrase jerking it as a woman on this podcast. (laughs) Hey guys, jerking it. Hey guys, welcome back to jerk time with Brittany Brisk. Welcome back to jerking it with Brittany Brisk. Today's contender is, that's criminal. My goal, and this is, it is inspired uh, uh, by Drew, by Drew Afwalo, is just, I want to make men feel this small because I have felt this small for the majority of my life. I have uh, felt sexualized and objectified and just like really not like a real human person. And so if I have the opportunity to make a man feel that way, hey, I'm going to take it. Okay. And it's nothing bad. I'm just saying he's hot. Okay. So for all you, all you bitches, all you bitches who are like, okay, so how come she can talk about a man like that, but when a man talks like that about a woman, do you guys get so mad? How about shut the fuck up? How about shut the fuck up? It's a joke, but also maybe it's not. And also it's my podcast to shut the fuck up. Okay, how come she's allowed? That's me tasing you, bitch. Okay, so she's the woman and she's like. Now try to speak, bitch, you're drooling. Get off the carpet. (laughs) That rug is from Lowe's. Don't drool into my fucking rug. Bubble Bass cosplay coming soon. Bubble Bass X Ghost from Call of Duty cosplay X... Koenig from Call of Duty, ex Kylo Ren. I'm going to be all of that together. Actually, I'm going to be Bubble Bass, ex Kylo Ren, and then my boyfriend, because I'm going to have a boyfriend at Halloween. I already, it's like a thing. I don't know. I'm just like manifesting it. I feel it in the air. Um, something's happening. I'm going to have to update you guys because I just feel it. Okay. Um, and then boyfriend is going to be cosplaying as Ghost from Call of Duty. So we'll we'll check in on that. You know, um, <laughs> I'll, sh- I'll show you the Bubble Bass fit. Still no pickles. <laughs> That's literally me. I'm bubble bass as fuck. Something is on my spirit that I need to like. I'm I'm about to fucking hyperventilate. Okay, so I'll get into everything later. But let me just get this off my chest really quick. I'm like gonna have a freak out. As some of you may know, I have a favorite Call of Duty cosplayer. I have a favorite one. Okay, and for the sake of uh my embarrassment. I'm not going to name him, but core Broski Nation probably knows who it is. He's my favorite. I don't know if I've ever said he's my favorite, but he is. I have like a little internet crush on him, right? It's like, oh my God. That's... And then he followed me back and I was like, oh my God. And then we flirt on live sometimes. And I'm obsessed with him. Like I'm obsessed with him. Well, I'm creeping, right? I'm creeping because I'm a woman and that's what we do. That's what I do. Uh, okay. It's the end of Barbie summer. I'm going to creep on my maskless Call of Duty boyfriend, a uh, crush on TikTok, okay? Because what? I'm I'm a simple woman. I go to his profile and I'm looking. I'm like, gotta find this dude's last name. <laughs> like he's got, men are stupid, bitch. I know he's got his last name somewhere on here. And so I'm going through his following because I'm fucking psychotic. I find nothing. Also, a TikTok following isn't really indicative of like, you know, who you are as a person. Um, Well, maybe it is, but not in the sense that I need. So I go on Instagram. Okay, I find his Instagram. It's linked in his bio. I'm like, I'm on the Instagram. I'm whatever. Going through his following again. It's only like, you know, a handful of people. I'm like, damn. And it's also all co- cosplayers. Like, he only follows cosplayers. I'm like, fuck. He's also got a good following on Instagram. Like, so- for what he does, like, solid. 
And so I'm like, give me something, dude. You don't follow your sister or something on Instagram. Damn. You don't have any tag photos that your mom posted. Damn. Does he follow his personal account from his cosplay account? Whatever. Well, he has a link tree linked in his bio. And so I click on the link tree, but she's got a Twitter. I go to the Twitter and tell me why. Tell me why. My TikTok boyfriend is posting nudies on Elon Musk's ex. He's posting hog pics on Twitter. <laughs> My face is hot. He's posting cock and ball pics on Twitter. <laughs> This man is so horny on live, but horny in like a fun flirty way, not in like a, like a he's posting hog online way. I did not expect that. Like he's so like, he's very witty and he's very like self-aware, but also, I don't know, he's a cosplayer, like slay. And so I was not expecting that. I literally, I did this whole rabbit trail and I found his, which is public, like he linked it. I go to his Twitter and oh my God. And it's not just like, oh, I'm showing my abs. It's like, he's, he's holding that thing. What Trixie say? Holding holding your cock like a dead hamster. <laughs> That's literally what he was doing. <laughs> holding your penis like it's a dead hamster <laughs> is literally like I just on the couch. This was probably no more than ten minutes ago. I was sitting on my couch. I will not show you who it is because I still want him. Okay, I still baby. It's okay. You can post cock pics on Twitter. Just come home to me. <laughs> Baby, you can post hog all day and all night. We have got to keep the lights on, but come home to me, okay? That's how I'm feeling in this moment. If you need to post your taint on God's internet, I'm not gonna stop you, okay? Just know who that taint belongs to. Me talking to a straight man like that. I literally, I, li I just, I need actually to feel the touch of a man. This is getting to a point and I'm hyper self-aware of it that's actually ridiculous. <laughs> getting ridiculous i need i am so touch starved oh I'm, I'm gonna start chewing on the fucking desk dude i'm i'm gnawing at the iron bars of my enclosure <laughs> let me uh, i need dick <laughs> i have so much pent up estrogen in my fucking body i could be the next virgin mary i could be the next what is it called immaculate conception Whatever Virgin Mary did, I could do 10 times better, okay? And guess what? My baby's gonna pop out with a fucking Call of Duty ghost mask on. I have so much estrogen in my body, I could deliver, like, quadruplets. My quadruplets come out and they all have big foreheads and long blonde extensions. I'm like, guys, stop! I, like, I think that as a generation of women, a lot of us are stuck in this headspace of, like, I need dick badly i said that like trump badly <laughs> i need dick badly the most ever no one's ever needed dick more than me in this moment no one's needed cock <laughs> shut up badly no one's needed dick more badly more intensely <laughs> The Call of Duty cosplayer was posting cock on Twitter. Cock, not only balls, but also cock. Mine's bigger. Oh my God. I literally, it was the most jarring moment of my life when I pulled up that Twitter account and I saw him holding hog. He was grasping his hog like Squidward in that episode of Jellyfishing on Spongebob. When they said, firmly grasp it, and they put it through his, his hand. <laughs> That's literally, this dude was holding his penis, his peener, his weenie peener. I just needed to get that off my chest because I need him. I don't know where he fucking lives. I don't even know his real name, okay? Actually, maybe I do. Maybe his real name's real name, but I don't know anything else about him because my search kind of was halted, right? Any other information that I was seeking to find was I went fucking brain dead the minute I saw hog pics. <laughs> and he's got like... I think you can, it's not OnlyFans, it's something else that you can pay. And I was like, I know. First of all, if I sign up for that, that's a new low. That's my rock bottom. Y'all thought I had rock bottom? No, 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 no. There's always lower. Oh, I can always go lower.
buying a Call of Duty cosplayer's fucking Patreon for cock pics. <laughs> oh my god! What are we doing? We have lost the plot! This is crazy! This is crazy. I almost did it and I was like, Brittany, stand up. Get up. And so I walked my ass from the living room to the podcast room and I said I needed to tell you guys about it. <laughs> I don't have anything else I needed to say. That was kind of it. Thank you guys so much for listening. No, okay, we'll get into it. We'll get into the rest. Let me just take a fucking break. Let, let's take a break. Okay, welcome back. Sorry for the screaming and the yelling and the crying and the pining. I'd like to apologize in general for the amount of pining and yearning that I do on this podcast. It is unrivaled and it is unabashed and it is humiliating to say the absolute least. Oh, fuck. Why am I going to cry? I'm not going to cry. Just started thinking about ghost dick again. I'm not going to cry. Okay. So sorry for crying. That was unexpected. <laughs> We go from talking about Call of Duty penis to crying over God. <laughs> and that's kind of going to be the summary of this podcast. Coming off of the um, emotional roller coaster of the last episode, where I talked about um, needing penis and the traumas the church inflicted upon my psyche as a young woman. Now, both of those, it would be, you you would be amazed if you haven't listened to that episode, how easily I transitioned in between the two. Uh, it's kind of a superpower I have. I can link any, any two topics if you just give me 45 minutes and a microphone. There's this TikTok trend that went around that was like, ask any man in your life how often they think about the Roman Empire. And the majority of answers were like, once or twice a week, if not every day. What the fuck? You're thinking about Julius Caesar every day? You're thinking about a man every day? Gay. <laughs> oh, I think about the Roman Empire. I'm gay. You're gay. <laughs> you're telling me you're thinking about a man voluntarily one day every once or twice every day? Wow. It was the funniest trend too because some some guys were like, what? But the majority of videos I saw were like, oh, all the time. Crazy. What a crazy thing. I also wanted to point out that I have come to a realization about myself that I wanted to kind of uh, bear my soul to you guys and, and share my discovery. Not a single episode has come out. Huh? Not a single episode has come out of this podcast where I talk like a toddler. Not a single episode of this podcast has come out where I have not spoken about a man. I repeatedly and violently fail the Bechtel test. <laughs> On this podcast, I repeatedly, offense after offense, fail the Bechtel test. And I challenged myself today, too. I was like, I'm not going to talk about men. And then what I open up with, men. Okay, so actually, Cody Ko and also men are gay because they like the Roman Empire. And I feel like, I feel like I don't need to keep talking about Call of Duty cosplayers. You bitches get the fucking memo. You get what I'm, what I'm doing here. And if you actually look at my tracks, don't. I can't girl boss without my fucking coffee! So the Call of Duty cosplayers thing is really getting out of control and I just wanted to apologize once again to everyone who's ever thought about or has listened to this podcast because I've gotten myself into a bit of a pickle and I told myself I wasn't going to talk about this today, but fuck it. You know what I mean? Like there's no, there's no going back. Last time I talked about hog picks. <laughs> My favorite cosplayer did move forward when sending me a DM. <laughs> that he saw the episode. Now, did I know this was coming? Yes. Was it avoidable? Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't have talked about it. I shouldn't have talked about it. I should have kept my discovery of him posting hog pics on Twitter to myself, but I want to share it with my team. Okay. You guys are the team. I had to call an immediate, immediate action. We needed a committee meeting on how to proceed with that information. It's like we were hunting down a terrorist and we got his exact coordinates. That's what it felt like in that moment. When I was in my living room and I saw he was posting hog on Twitter, I said, call the fucking chief of staff. 
get them and I don't care. We need to go live. <laughs> we need to talk about this on national news. A national news blast. A national news blast. Everyone needs to know about this. He's posting tip and hog pics. <laughs> He's posting ball shaft pics on Twitter. Anyway, he did move forward with sending me a message <laughs> saying, saw you talking about me on your podcast. And I said, well, <laughs> well, yes. Just how do you, how do you, where do you go from here? What have I done? I need a cosplayer boyfriend so bad. I need to get into boyfriend AI, bitch. <laughs> I need to get into boyfriend AI. I'm going to do a YouTube video on character AI. Because y'all have been dropping that in my comments all the time on character AI. Because I read those on t on TikTok. Because TikTok is doing what Wattpad can't. Oh my god. Actually, I can talk about this for fucking hours and hours and hours. You can put a song to it as you're reading it, which is so fucking slay. You can actively read the comments on it. Like on what part people are at. Because they'll do like screenshot slideshows. So here's, I wish I could pull up an example. I will. Okay, here's one example just because I watched this last night. Okay, and it's on the top of my head. So this is, it's Ghost. Okay, fuck you, bitch. It's Call of Duty. Shut up. Okay, so it's a Ghost X reader <laughs> fan fiction. They're about to go into a mission where they have to be in business formal. My favorite type of mission, okay? They're getting cleaned up and they're looking, they're like oogling each other. They're oogling and ogling and googling each other. They're... <laughs> at each other <laughs> and so that's the setup here the sound is this sort of like ambient you know like kind of sexy kind of like what's going on and then you start off with a picture of ghost without a mask on okay with his tattoos i can't talk about it and then it's these it's text screenshots either that the creator wrote like sometimes i'll get ones on my for you page that are like someone wrote this in their notes app or wherever and they just screenshot it bit by bit and, and they'll put that like you know as a slideshow on tiktok or they'll have character ai or what's the other one crush on ai write like an nsfw fan fiction and then they'll screenshot it and put it on tiktok and it's everything that was wrong it's everything that was good about wattpad but what wattpad was missing and so i'll get these and my only complaint is that they're short. Like, it's still like 30 slides. And I'll get to the 30th slide and I'm like, this is too short, what happens next? And then I'll have to go to their account and then I'll, it'll be like part eight of the story. <laughs> oh my God! It's what Wattpad wanted to be, but never could be. Wattpad ran, no, Wattpad crawled so TikTok could walk so AO3 could run. Okay, and that's kind of the progression there. So this one, and I'm not going to read it out. Actually, maybe I will. No, I'm not. But I'll give you the gist of the story. The gist of the story is um, he, Ghost, walks in the room. So she's getting ready right in front of the mirror. She's like, got this freakum dress on, like short and backless and emerald and long sleeve, but her legs are out. And, and she's like doing her hair up in like a curly pony. And he, Ghost, walks in the room and he goes... Head down. <laughs> he goes, head down. And she's like, but I just did my hair. I, I just curled it and put it in like a ponytail. And he said, head down. And she's like, mask off. <laughs> mask off. And he's like, no, maybe. And then they're flirting back and forth. I need to go to prison. They're flirting back and forth. And then he, she's like, fine. And she takes her hair down and he comes over and like, brushes it over her ear to hide her earpiece because she's on a mission. Because <laughs> she's on a mission. And you have to hide your fucking inner earpiece. Duh, this is spy 101 shit, okay? Don't let the enemy see your earpiece that you're communicating with your team. That you have air support ready to go if things go south. You cannot let the enemy know, okay? So Ghost comes over and he's like, head down. And he and he puts her hair over her ear and like kind of touches her face. And he's like, much better. And she's like, oh, I, 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 
And I read this last night and I was like, I think I need to be shot in the fucking head. These are the simplest of scenarios. And I'm laying in my bed, kicking my feet and giggling and blushing. Like as if it happened to me. That is insane behavior. That is quite literally loony bin. Bring back the loony bin. I know some bitches that need to go to the loony bin. I'll be driving the fucking bus, okay? Anyway, this is what Wattpad wanted to be, okay? And now, through the innovation of modern technology, we have achieved what our forefathers only hoped to achieve. The promise that Wattpad gave us has been fulfilled <laughs> by TikTok slideshows! I love them. Holy shit, there's some devastating fan fictions on TikTok that people make. Devastating. Because so many of the... <laughs> so many of the characters that we love are uh, damaged beyond repair, I would argue. Not fixable men. And there is something so hot about that, but so, so, so sad. And so many of the, uh, um, so many of the fan fictions that I see or the stories that I see are about just unrequited, 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 unreciprocated, non-reciprocated love where the woman or whoever like loves Ghost so much through his flaws, through everything, through the outburst, through whatever, and he just, for whatever reason, from his own past or his trauma, is just incapable of loving her the same way or loving her back at all. I'm sure, like, he's fond of her or he's fond of the care that she gives him. But also, men like that resent women who care for them. Okay, let's fucking talk about that for a second. That's about to piss me off. I know this is sp sprouting from a ghost fanfiction I read, but that's such a real trope, actually, in, like, real life. Broken men. You know, I can fix him. Like, the classic I can fix him trope of, you know, he's just a little damaged. He's just a little whatever. I can mold him into this perfect person that I need him to be. I've been there. Trust and believe. And, uh, hey, it never works, by the way. Or you fix him just enough to where you're like, I can't do this anymore. And then the next girl gets the version of him that you made him into. You know? Someone who's fucking self-sufficient. And you teach him how to do his laundry. And you teach him how to, like, keep a, keep a clean kitchen. And how to do normal chores that his fucking mom didn't teach him and all this. It's like, I made him an adult man, but I don't get to reap the benefits of all that fucking grunt work I put in. The next girl gets to. And good fucking luck. Because he's still broken. So yeah. I don't know why I got off on that. Oh, the ghost fanfiction. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so the ghost fanfiction was he's so damaged. And this one I read was so heart-wrenching. Because in this fanfiction, Ghost is an alcoholic. He like drinks whiskey. Hot. And uh, he would come home late all the time. And there would be these little moments that were like they would really love each other. And like cuddle her to sleep and do all this and then he would like go missing for two days because he was off on a bender or he whatever or she would be like I made us dinner because you told me you'd be home at 7 and it's like 11 p.m. and like I threw it out and I did this and like they would sit there and argue and then he would storm out and whatever and after what she like gave him chance after chance after chance of like I know you can be better than this I know you can be better than this and he was like you don't know shit you don't know shit about me. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> And so, at the end of this fan fiction, this, this screen slideshow, she packs up her bags and she waits for him to come home one night. And he's drunk. And she's sitting in the living room. And her shit's all packed, like, ready to go. And she's just waiting for him. And it's that sort of reserved, calm, and cool of, like, I have made my decision. I am at my wit's fucking end. You have robbed me and drained me of all emotion or cares that I gave about the situation. I'm done. I'm not even, like, angry. I'm just, I just don't want to fucking see you. Just, just get out of my life. You know, it's that sort of... You've reached the stage beyond anger, beyond sadness, beyond denial of just apathy. I don't care. You've hurt me so many times. I don't actually give a shit what happens to you. I don't care where you are. I don't care who you get with. I just never want to see you again. So she's at that point in this fan fiction. It was so well written. I wish I could. I'll try to find it. And I'll link it in the description. Maybe. Um, 
And she was like, she was like just the cold, dead stare. And he comes in and he's like, what's that? Like her luggage. And she's like, I'm leaving you. She's like, I can't fucking do this anymore. You've disappointed me too many times. I've given you too many chances and I can't do it. And I love you, but you know, not enough to, to keep subjecting myself to this. So I wish you the best. And he gets angry, of course. And he's like, you're not fucking leaving. Let's talk about this in the morning. You do this all the time. Like you're so dramatic. You're this, you're that. And she's like, when you're in a better state of mind, um, maybe we can talk, but I'll be by next week to pick up the rest of my things. And he's like, Oh, stands in front of the door, you know, like blocks the door frame with his body. And she's like, move, move. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so she takes her stuff and she leaves and he sits on the couch and like kills the, the bottle of whiskey and then goes to sleep. Well, this fucking fan fiction. There's a part two, of course. I scrolled to like part six. The part two is uh, she goes in and gets her things and like fully moves out. And he's he brings her flowers and he's like, I'm sorry. You know, you're right. Da, 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 let's give this another go. And she's like. Did you not fucking hear me? I did not stutter. I'm leaving. I wish you the best in your sobriety journey, but I am not sticking around to see if you win or lose at it. And he's like, please don't do this. Please don't do this. And she's like, goodbye. And so she leaves. And I was like, pussy, pussy, pussy girl. Yes. Yay! So she leaves and she's like crying in the car, but she's like, I can't fucking do this. Like I stand by my decision. And it fast forwards like two weeks and ghost kind of like drinks himself into a spiral. And then he's like, I'm going to clean up my life for her. <laughs> I'll clean up my life for her. And I'm like, okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. And then a month goes by. There's no contact. And then two months, three months, they're, they're kind of talking in between of like, are you good? How have you been? Yeah, I'm all right. You know? How are you? Just like really awkward. And she lives somewhere else now. And so then he's like eight months sober and he tells her, he's like, I got my little coin. And she's like, let's meet for coffee. You know, like kind of a, kind of an exploratory. I want to see if he's fucking serious and like how his demeanor has changed. And so they, they have this date set and the date comes, ghost shows up. He's got flowers and she never shows up. And he's like, that fucking bitch stood me up. Is this another lesson? Is this another, like, uh, oh, I can't believe I fell for the, like, oh, I just feel so shitty. I've done all this work. Like, da, da, da. And so he storms out and he goes home and he's like, send this message, whatever. He gets a call from Bryce, who was another Call of Duty character. It's not funny. What, what's about to happen? It's not funny. But he gets a call from Bryce, who's like, Ghost. <laughs> Ghost. You gotta come quick. It's not good. And he's like, oh shit. Is it your name? And he's like, yeah. So he like grabs his jacket. He runs. He like speeds there. Bitch, she got in a car wreck and died. <laughs> it's not funny. But it's just like a fan fiction that I was literally sobbing my eyes <laughs> in my bed reading it girl she got in a car wreck and had died and here he was while she's literally bleeding out in her car because like a drunk driver hit her or something like that which also was a deeper part of the story because ghosts used to drive drunk it's a whole thing she got hit by a drunk driver and was like bleeding out jaws of life all that he shows up on the scene she's dead on sight oh bitch the last thing he ever like thought about her as she was alive, was this bitch. She set me up. I always knew she was... Da -da -da. <gasps> she was on her way. And the only reason she died was because she was going to meet him. Oh, the guilt. Oh, the guilt. Oh! 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 And so forever and ever, amen, he's going to have to live with that guilt. Yet another person who has left him, who has loved him, he fucked it up, and has left him. And so the very final scene is he goes to visit her grave. <laughs> it's not funny. It's just fucking ridiculous. This is a Call of Duty character. <laughs> this is a video game character who kills people and is in the British military. Special ops. 
he goes to her grave with flowers and is talking to her like, yeah, this happened today and I'm 10 months sober and this, that, and the other. And I never deserved you. Okay. Happy birthday, babe. Like that sort of shit, like talking to her at her grave. And then he like leaves and, uh, it's actually really fucking depressing because his whole, like, the consensus, like, from the character's point of view is, like, I should have died with you. Like, I should have been the one to fucking die. Like, I'm a no one. I'm miserable. I'm this, that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Fuck me reading this. I was like, this is intense. But, of course, I finished all six parts. 120 slides. I sat there. My poor thumb was, like, like a water bottle cracking. My wrist bone. I read it. So it was such a good, it was a well-written story, but it was so sad. It was so sad. And it's got that emo TikTok, like, you know, dramatic, sad background music. And then the very last one when uh, he's visiting her grave was, when will it end? How do you it? I was crying. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> There are some novelists on TikTok, bitch. Some novelists. <gasps> Do you know what I mean? I need a ghost bobblehead. If anyone wants to send me a ghost bobblehead, actually don't. I can buy one. I'm going to Amazon Prime one tonight. I'm going to Amazon Prime a, go <gasps> a ghost and Koenig one. Oh my God. It's time we start expanding the set design. We've got Mando, Kylo Ren. Who else do we need? Um, it's only masked men that we're doing. We're doing Koenig. We're doing ghost. I'm literally going to order my mini, mini Funko Pops tonight. Is this who I've become? Is this who we are? Oh my God. Is this who we are? Is this what we represent? <laughs> Telling somebody to kiss it, lick it, suck it, stick it. That's me as fuck. Telling it, kiss it, lick it, suck it. That's me. Oh my God. Is this what we represent? <laughs> Is this what I'm choosing to do on God's internet? On Elon Musk's internet, bitch! <sighs> Kiss and lick and suck and gag and choke on it is really what she should have included at the end of that. Oh my god. It's true, though. This is what I represent. The horny and depraved and disgusting women out there. Guys, this is our community. Rise up. Depraved, horny, disgusting, gross, uh, disturbed, <laughs> ill touch starved <laughs> anyway me and my cosplayer boyfriend are <laughs> in love we're in love and uh the wedding is going to be um skeleton themed it's going to be british flags everywhere and we're both actually going to be in ghost cosplay and also i don't want to see his face i've never seen his face i don't want to keep that shit to yourself that shit is gross keep it to yourself okay face reveal i don't want a face reveal i am nervous if he's ugly though but I don't want a face reveal because right now he's so cute. <laughs> Some very quick um, housekeeping things. I don't know. We have a new addition. Everyone say welcome to the stage. Ghost. We had a, a ghost Funko Pop. <laughs> Look, guys. Guys, we have a ghost Funko Pop right here. Can you see it? I'm holding it. And I thought it was going to be like my Mando and Kylo Ren ones with the, these cool stands with the bobbleheads. This one doesn't have a freaking bobblehead. It sucks. And it was the most expensive one. It was 50 fucking dollars. But I bought it. And he's got sunglasses. He's got sunglasses. That's my baby girl. Contrary to popular belief, this is my baby girl. Okay? Simon Riley. And yeah, it's kind of concerning. He's like holding a... He's holding a rifle. Okay? Whatever. That is the newest addition. We've also got a uh, president at work over here. Caution, president at work. Okay, I have a whole list of things to get through. And I feel like as soon as I hit record, I'm like. That's how I feel. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I, I went to see Hosier at Madison Square Garden. What the fuck? I saw Sleep Token at the House of Blues Anaheim in VIP. What the fuck? We show up and I'm like, I love Sleep Token. I like Vessel. I think he's cute. I like too. He's the drummer. Like, I, I was so... I felt 14 and we were cosplaying. That's how it felt. I was like, we were in all black, like ripped. And Sarah bought these like <laughs> pentagram tights <laughs> and showed up in devil horns. <laughs> she was like, I don't know. It was just the 
vibe and she looked so cute. But we showed up and saw the crown. And she like slowly took off the devil horns, put them in her bag. She was like, I don't know if this is the vibe. So we're walking around House Blues and it's like kind of getting kind of crazy. Like I'm getting recognized. We're trying to like, and it's standing room only. There's no seats because it's House of Blues. And we show up so late because me and Sarah are both Tarses. <laughs> so we're late. And uh, we're walking around and I'm like, dude, this fucking sucks. How am I supposed to make Vessel fall in love with me if we're in the back of the fucking room? So we're like, oh, I can't see, I can't see. We're like running around. And then we go up to the security guard and we're like, what do I have to pay you for us to go up to VIP? Like, cause I want to go up on the balcony. I was like, the shirt off my back lady. Let's, I just need to see Vessel. She was like, you go to the VIP booth, see if they got anything. And I was like, okay. So somehow through the grace of God, Sarah finesses, like we get VIP, we had to pay for it, of course, like slay. And we, and we go up there and we meet these like wonderful people and we have a blast and we're so close to the stage. Like, I don't know how it happened. It was in a, ma a matter of five minutes. We like got up in this booth and we were so close to the stage. And so at one point at, during the concert, <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> First of all, they played all my favorite songs. That's a lie. They didn't play Euclid, which is fine. It's not. I cried, but I cried a lot throughout the night. They didn't play Euclid and that's fine. They're playing all the hits. And we looked at the set list beforehand, but they threw some Sneakos in there. At one point, Vessel comes over to... Vessel's the lead singer, by the way. This guy. Okay? You guys know Vessel. You guys... You guys know he's my baby's father. You guys know we have three children. And we live in a beautiful uh, English countryside estate together. And uh, we raise goats. Okay. So that's my baby's father. And at one point, he comes over to our side, like, of the stage. And Sarah, one thing about Sarah Baska is she's going to put on a show. And when we're together, hey, it's the fucking Goofy Goobers, okay? It's the Goofy Goober show. We have some little drinkies. And we're the only bitches in the fucking room that have our flash on. Because why would you do that? <laughs> We turn our flash on. We're filming each other like we're in a 2000s music video. Like we're doing camera work. We're like, we're flipping it. We're doing like raindrop water effect, like going in. At one point he comes over to our side of the stage and I'm holding my phone like this with the flash on. Like, so the flash is pointing at us. And so only our faces are illuminated because the rest of the crowd is in darkness. Like there's no light shining. And I'm screaming the lyrics and I'm pointing at him. He does one of these and he nods and he points at us and I literally, my knees buckled. <laughs> my knees buckled like Justin Bieber had just blown me a kiss, bitch. I literally was like, I'm 13 and that's JB, except I'm 26 and that's a masked Englishman. Okay. It was equal parts like pathetic, but the best moment of my life. He came over and he like pointed and he like nodded because he could only see our faces because we were fucking flash on. Then he leaves. He walks away like to the other side of the stage. And I was like, that's actually all. Because here's the tea. They're starting to interact with the crowd more. And the whole premise of being a masked band, an anonymous collective, is that you don't focus on the person. You focus on the music, which is true. However, I am nosy. I need to know. So, of course, like. You got to Google, but I won't like, don't, don't. Okay. Cause to respect the band and respect what they want. Like, I totally get it. The artistic perspective of listen to my music, not to me. Love that. The whole gist of the show is they don't interact with the audience. Really? Like they don't talk to the audience. There's not a spotlight on any of them. Like it's just a dark stage with, you know, lasers and smoke or whatever. Except for when he plays the piano. I think there's like one single spotlight on the back of him. But like they all wear masks. It's not like, okay, hot, sexy, I'm horny. Okay. So the show's going on and I'm noticing like throughout it. And I've also been seeing videos of this. Like fans are starting to kind of the Harry Stylesification of Sleep Token. <laughs> They're bringing cowboy hats and friendship bracelets. And it's so fucking funny because it's this like emo alt metal band it's like dun, 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 like that shit but it's like they do this they're like i love you guys and they're wearing silly cowboy hats i need to fuck him sorry i need to i need to fuck him bad i'm, I'm gonna i'm literally gonna 
going to start crying. I'm going to start crying. I need him so bad. It is a primal desire. It is a primal something so monkey in me. I look at him and I... <laughs> it's awful, dude. Me and Sarah the whole time were <laughs> off the fucking like balcony barricade. I'm like swinging like a chimpanzee. They started interacting with the crowd more. Okay. And they're wearing little cowboy hats and they like kiss each other through the masks on stage. Like they're having a silly goose time. Well, recently they'll start like yelling at the crowd. Like in a good way. Like the, the bass player and the guitar player, they'll yell at the crowd like, open the fucking pit! Because they're British. <laughs> open the pit! Or, they'll do this. Like, like separate. And then, oh, no, no, and then the mosh pit goes together. And I looked at Sarah and I said, we have to leave. <laughs> I said, we're not supposed to be here. Like, I am so Harry Styles, Ethel Kane coded. I'm not supposed to fucking be here. And they started moshing. And I said, are we going to die? And it's these sweaty, fat, white guys. <laughs> like, big, fat, whiteies. I'm so scared. <laughs> when big, fat, sweaty, white guys start moshing, get the fuck out of there, dude. <laughs> Someone's about to die. <laughs> I saw the big, fat, whiteies start shoving each other. And I said, no, no, no. Get me out. <laughs> anyway, so the show ends. And they turn on the house lights. And uh, there's some, like, a while ago, Sleep Token did this, like, acoustic series where they covered songs that aren't, like, obviously metal, which is another reason why I fucking love him. They covered uh, I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney Houston. They covered uh, When the Party's Over by Billie Eilish. Hot. They covered uh, Hey Ya by Outkast. But he makes them, like devastatingly sad how the fuck are you gonna take shake it like a polaroid picture and make it sad he did it go listen to it it's on youtube cried hey, uh, hey, uh. i said why am i crying you got that die yeah you got ah. <laughs> how did you make that emo that's so fucking funny i know i'm like there's this old 1975 interview of them and if you remember this from fucking tumblr it was at some festival or something and the interviewers had them draw for something and uh it was like a self-portrait or something and maddie's drawing and he goes and he's it's a heart a black heart but it's bleeding because it's so emo <laughs> that's how that's literally that was us last night anyway that's that's my sleep token thing um i am going to be thinking about them for a long time i already have been i've been listening to them for what two three months now Three months? Crazy. Crazy. I cannot wait to see them again. I, it literally, it's been a while, probably since, since I saw Bad Bunny, where it's literally this depression that sits in. Because with Harry shows and like, even I just saw Hosier, which I'll talk about in a second. It's like, I love them so much. I'm so happy they exist. I don't get sad. I used to. But then I was like, I just love them so much. Sleep Token, because this was the first time I've ever seen them, my, the first time I've ever been exposed to one of their shows, the same with Bad Bunny. It was the first time I'd ever seen him, like, a year ago. It's depression. It's like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, post-concert depression is so fucking real, and it hit me like a brick last night. We drove home, and I was like, he doesn't even know my name. <laughs> How are we supposed to fall in love? He doesn't even know my fucking name. Ugh. I saw Hosier at Madison Square Garden. And that's my first time, believe it or not, ever in my life seeing Hosier live. I never made it to like ACL or anything like that in high school or college because I was too poor. And also my dad wouldn't let me go in high school. And I've been such a Hosier fan for so long. It's been the pandemic. He's been working on the new album. He hasn't been on tour. I was like, I don't really know what to expect because I've seen videos of him on TikTok, you know, whatever. Of he's just, he, it's, it's this sort of, I don't know how to describe it other than it being this sort of Nashville mentality. Musicians in Nashville are very, I would say for the most part, because it's a lot of singers and songwriters. They don't really give a shit about the 
showmanship of it all. You know, like showing off or or the visuals or this or that. It's like Nashville musicians get together and just make beautiful music. And it's kind of a selfless act in a certain sense of we're getting together and and what I can bring to the the party will help make what you can bring shine. You know, it's like everyone's helping each other and and everyone has a unique skill set and it's sort of just that. It's like let's get together and let's just make music. That was the vibe of of Hosier's show. So that was uh that was Hosier Madison Square Garden. What else happened? Okay. <laughs> because you already know what the fuck I'm about to talk about. And if you're over it, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care. It's my podcast. Call of Duty cosplayers. Call of Duty cosplayers. Call of Duty cosplayers. Call of Duty. You bitches thought it was over? No. No. Grind. But you know I grind when I pull up a change of mind. It's not fucking over, dude. It is to the point. And I have been made acutely aware of something called Masktober and Kinktober and Wumptober. What the fuck is Wumptober, you bitches? We're making up words now. What is Wumptober? Wumbo. Wumptober. Wumptober. What is Wumptober? It's a 90s era fandom term for hurt slash comfort that tended to focus on the hurt in detail and sometimes went over the top, basically. This fan lore article gets into the history and there are differences between the terms wump and H slash C. What the fuck is HC? Wump basically means hurting your faves. So the gist is fan fictions where a character goes through a lot of pain, physically or mentally, but then in the end, they get help by someone who cares for them. It's more an extreme version of hurt slash comfort. Oh, that's what H slash C is. <laughs> hurt slash comfort. And I do love those. I do love a um, ghost fan fiction where he's wounded in action or your name is wounded in action and he has to like patch up her wound or she has to be like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll get you back to base. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm like writing my own bitch, and I'm into character AI now. I I can't talk about it. And honestly, I'm more of a Conan girl than Ghost now because I found Badger audios. I come on this podcast and really bare my soul to you guys every single fucking week. I listen to Badger audios now. I'm a changed woman. If you don't know what Badger is, I wouldn't look it up. Okay, I would not go on Reddit and look up B A D J H U R. You're gonna be shocked. NSFW 18 plus warning, okay, by the way, I finally was like, all right, what, what the fuck are these girls doing over on reddit.gov, on reddit.edu? And I pulled it up and I, my jaw just about came unhinged and fell to the fucking floor. Oh my God. Oh my God. So now I am a Koenig girl. I do love Koenig more than Ghost. And the only Funko Pop I could find was fucking Ghost. So whatever, dude. I still, I love Ghost, okay? Kony is, that is my baby's father. 610 Austrian war criminal, my baby's father, okay? And we have a beautiful, beautiful life together. Up here. <laughs> Up here. And you know what's so bad? It's, it's to the point with Call of Duty cosplayers now where I'm like, I have a few favorites now. My one man... My one man, I still love him, okay? But he's, like, not, like, you know? Because he's have a base. Like, it keeps knocking over. He's not as online anymore. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> and he doesn't go live as much anymore. So I can't flirt with him online. <laughs> I can't flirt with my boyfriend online anymore. It's to the point now, we're in uh, Masktober, Kinktober, bitch. Didn't know those were real terms, by the way. My entire For You page is just men in masks. And I'm really not upset. It's just like, I know every time I get on TikTok now, I'm going to be horned up. I'm on TikTok. I open TikTok. Boner. I open to, ooh, let me see what the girls are saying today. I have a boner. Bricked up in my fucking jeans. It's terrible, dude. 
every single live is either a man in a like motorcycle helmet or a biker helmet or ghost or the scream mask. I can't, I can't catch a fucking break. You bitches need to give me a break. Oh my God. And I just, I like recently, <laughs> this is so awesome. I recently have discovered that. So I have made um, a reputation for myself in the Call of Duty cosplay community, which didn't know that was a thing, by the way. I guess I'm in it now. I guess I have cemented myself as a figure in the Call of Duty cosplay community and not in a good way, never in a good way. I'll enter lives now and I won't even say anything. I'll just join the live because I want to see what the fuck's going on, okay? I want to see, is this, is this dude fucking weird? What are we talking about? Can I get him to play sleep token? <laughs> so I'll join the live and it'll pop up secret Britney has joined. And you bitches, you bitches, Broski Nation is always in these lives. Always. And you bitches clock it. I don't even say anything. I'm not like, I love you, ghost. I'm not like commenting in the lives. But y'all see Secret Britney and they go, oh, Britney's here. Oh, guys, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to lurk. You bitches shut the fuck up. I don't want them to know I'm here. I don't want them to know that I'm watching. I'm always watching, okay? Because sometimes I won't even join the live now. I'll just watch as it, you know, like when you scroll and you have to like enter the live. I'll watch it just outside of the live just because I want to see. <laughs> I want to I wanna creep. I want to see what type of videos they're making. I want to see how old they are. I want to see where they live. I want to see if they have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all that before I join the live now because you bitches got me fucked up. I join the live and it says secret Britney has joined. And everyone, oh, Britney's here, Britney's here. I joined one yesterday, okay? I don't even remember the dude's fucking username. Followed him though. Followed him, I guess. He immediately, it was like 400 people in this live, which is crazy, by the way, for a, for a ghost cosplayer. 400 people in this live. All of, like the majority of them, I would say, recognize, oh, secret Britney's joined the chat. And of course I start commenting, okay? Because I'm like, well, if they know I'm here, then I might as well start interacting. He sees it. He notices. He goes, no fucking way Britney's here. And I'm like, <sighs> also, I'm like eating spaghetti. I'm like eating, I'm on my lunch break. <laughs> I'm on my lunch break. I'm in the work room, okay? I'm in the break room and I'm eating spaghetti. And I'm just kind of like single minded, like absent mindedly scrolling as I'm eating my spaghetti. And then I hear, hold up, Britney's here. And I drop my phone dramatically. It clatters to the table. And I go, oh, fuck. I go, oh. I, I start smoking a cigarette. Oh, I can't believe this always fucking happens. I ash my cigarette in my spaghetti. I put it out in my spaghetti. I keep eating it. And so I, I, he goes, oh, Brittany's here. No fucking way, Brittany's here. Brittany, Brittany, if you're still in here, say hi. And so, of course, I'm like, hey, babe. Hi, boyfriend. <laughs> That's my boyfriend. Just a white man in cosplay. He goes, oh, my God. Runs away from the camera. It goes, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Like I'm, like I'm going to hurt him. <laughs> and this isn't the first time I've seen a video like that. Like the Call of Duty cosplayers, bitch. They're like me waiting for Britney to find my account. It's them like huddling in a corner, like afraid. Shit. Shit. Big old broskies coming for him. <laughs> Big old Boski's on the way. Hey, if you're cosplaying Call of Duty, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. I want you. <laughs> I want you. Okay? No one is safe. You're a cosplayer, dude? Guess what? I already found you. I already found you. I've already commented. Check your comment section. I'm thirsting. Okay? Guess what? I have your IP address. <laughs> you're cosplaying? I know your mom's name. <laughs> You're a cosplayer? Is this where you work? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all up in and around that. Okay? So this dude is like, oh, Brittany's in the live. I was like, oh, shit. So I start commenting back and forth. And he does that. Like, he's hiding. Like, he's running away. And he's backed up against the wall. Like that mouse that's like, <laughs> like, that. <laughs> that's what these cosplayers are doing. So I guess I have a reputation for being, um, 
so horny online that it's starting to scare people. And if that's the case, sorry. Okay? You guys know the fucking solution. You know how to fix this. Someone has to step up and take one for the team. Someone has to be my Call of Duty cosplayer boyfriend. Someone has to take one for the team. Just get it over with and I'll move on. Also, I think it's really cute. It's not cute. It kind of makes me like upset, <laughs> but it's kind of endearing. A lot of these cosplayers obviously are like really awkward, right? Because they're fucking weirdos. Me saying that. Yeah, I'm actually very normal, by the way. These are the fucking weirdos. I am the most normal person, I think, online at this point. These cosplayers, I'll like flirt with them openly. I'm like, I want you. <laughs> I want you. And they'll get so flustered on live. And everyone in the comments is like, oh, he's, he's blushing, he's kicking his feet and whatever. And I'm like, you like that baby girl? <laughs> that tweet that's like, I love making grown men laugh. Like, yeah, you like that one baby girl? <laughs> it's me and my cosplay. Yeah, you, you think that's funny, baby girl? You giggling for me? Grown man, he's 30. Yeah, you like that one? He was giggling, girl. He was blushing. Because I kept being like, that's my boyfriend. He said something like, I want to do a different ghost cosplay, but I'm too poor. And I said, <laughs> it's dead comments. <laughs> I commented in it and I said, me when Bay says he can't afford cosplay, go get my purse. <laughs> Go get my purse. What's the Venmo? <laughs> I just need a trophy husband. Baby, this is what I said. When my, my, the main Call of Duty cosplayer from the, that first episode, okay? And y'all, if you know his name, of course you know his name. I'm not going to say it though, but you know his name. I don't care what you got to do, Okay. If you need to post hog pics on Twitter, if you need to go live and beg people for money, baby, I am the breadwinner. I will put food on the table. You are my trophy husband, okay? You just, you sit there and shut the fuck up and just look pretty, okay? It is my greatest honor and privilege to be able to objectify men with my platform. <laughs> I, from the moment I wake in the morning, to when I fall asleep at night. I'm objectifying men. And it feels fucking good. When you've been objectified your whole life. When your entire existence as a woman. Has been reduced down to tits and ass. Being a whole. Oh I'll do that to men. I'll do that to men no fucking question. And it's fun. Because guess what. They like it. They like it. Y'all are some whores. A, a class A harlot. We are dealing with S-tier harlots on our hands. You're going to get into Call of Duty cosplay? Stolen valor, by the way. You're not in the fucking military. You're going you're gonna to parade around that slutty little waist and do hand reveals? What are we in fucking 1841, dude? Ankle reveal? Huh? Arm vein reveal? And guess what? Like, save. <laughs> Neck vein reveal, like, save, download the phone. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I just, I don't care if my man, but you haven't seen my man. He's doing Call of Duty cosplay online and begging for money. Okay? And that's fine. All of us have our grind. That's my baby's grind. I'm going to let him do his thing and he can come home to me and cook me dinner. Okay, well, I'm out making the big bucks for both of us. Well, I'm funding his cosplay. Okay. He's like, I come home. He says, hey, babe, I made Skeddy for dinner. And he's in a maid's costume. Okay, that's my man. That's my husband. And that's just how it is. I saw this TikTok that was like, if I see one single man in a masked costume this year for Halloween, <laughs> Run. <laughs> run. If I see you in a mask with that slutty little what? Run. I'm only going to say it once. Do you have one warning? That is so fucking real, dude. 
I forget who the girl who made that video. I was dying. She said, if I see you in a run, so real. Anyway, I have, um, I hate to say this, but it's true. I'm not really on AO3 the way I used to be because now the latest thing, okay, in my cinematic universe and my media consumption and intake is they will go, these, these creators, <laughs> creators, these authors will go on C.AI, which is character AI, and come up with a whole storyline, screenshot it, and post 35 slides on a TikTok slideshow to music, and they'll put pictures in between sometimes, and I fucking gag for it! I live! It is so good! It is a, a immersive cinematic experience, okay? Imagine, like, reading Akatar, but in between all of it, it's like, there's music playing, and she's included pictures. Yeah, get into it. Oh my god. So I've been doing that. I'll, I'll be on part 12 of a character AI fucking thing on, on TikTok, slideshow on TikTok. And I'm like, where? You seriously haven't posted part 13? <laughs> uh, could someone tag me when she posts part 13? That's the wave I'm on, dude. It just, sometimes AO3 like overwhelms me. And also I've been seeing a lot of like, I don't think I really know how to search for tags because I do it one way, but then some of the authors are like, I don't know how to tag. And I'm like, well, then what the fuck are you? If you don't know what you're doing, I don't know what I'm doing, girl. Because I'm looking for, I'm looking for Masktober, okay? I'm looking for Koenig X Reader, Wump. <laughs> Koenig X Wump, X Headcanon, X Hurt Comfort, X Kinktober, Wumptober 2023. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm, I'm not finding what I want. There's some good ones on Tumblr too, but I'm the the latest wave is Badger Koenig, and uh, some of you bitches are like, "What is she actually talking about?" None of these are real words. Koenig, Wumptober, Ao3, Badger. What are we talking about? Hey, speak English. Badger is a creator who does. NSFW. Every time I say NSFW, it makes me think of George W. Bush. W. NSFW Bush. <laughs> George NSFW Bush. <laughs> That's my president. George NSFW 18 plus Bush. Stupid. Um, it's that. Okay. I can confirm with equal parts annoyance and satisfaction, they're scared of me. So it's going to take, it's going to take, this is my challenge to the Call of Duty cosplayers. Who won't me? <laughs> Who won't me? Because I know y'all are scared of me now. So it's going to take one, it's going to take one, y'all have to battle to the death, like a medieval joust. Who won't me? And I mean, seriously, seriously. Half you bitches are on the East Coast. That is so fucking annoying. Don't do that. That is my challenge to the Call of Duty cosplayers because I know y'all are going to clip this and put it on TikTok. The new challenge is don't be afraid of me and who won't me? Who won't me? Damn, shit. God. I'm not asking for much. <laughs> I'm not, just don't be weird. Just be normal like me. I am normal, by the way. Okay? So just be normal. That's all I'm asking. Be a Call of Duty cosplayer. Have a normal job. Be normal. Okay? Thank you. Okay, guys. I think that'll do it for me for this episode. Next week, I'm going to talk about Avatar. So hope you're ready because I know I said Jack Skellington is the ideal man. Jake Sully! Jake Sully, my Jake. Okay, rewatched Avatar. I'll talk about it all next week. <laughs> it's been it's been bad for me. It's been bad in the Broski household. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Some updates. New Royal Court coming out October 19th. And it's with a Twitch streamer who's very hot. Okay? Fine. Whatever. 
Again, another week has gone by on this podcast where I have failed and failed and failed again the Bechtel test. Okay. Bechtel test. We're not winning that around here. If there's a prize to be won from the Bechtel test, not winning it. Okay. I'll try my hardest, but I'm going to fail every time.